Hey there guys, GowlerCowan23 back again with my last video of the year. And what fitting way to finish off the year is of my top films of the year. Now last year I did a top 12 of 2012, but this year it's been impossible to do even a top 10. So I've had to go to top 20, just so many amazing films this year. Now as uh, a lot of uh, kind of top 10s, uh, this is going to be my list. There's going to be films that you will not agree with. There'll be films that you've probably never seen. So be aware that it is my list. If you are going to comment, please don't do. Please don't um, post any derogatory comments saying that what the hell are you talking about. Uh, we're all we're all grown ups here. Let's act like it. And uh, every uh, also every film on this list, um, I pers I personally have seen in the cinema. Uh, you might if you have seen it at all, you uh, might have seen it on DVD or something. Because there's a couple in here that were kind of like one-off screenings, preview screenings, free screenings, what have you. So uh, you might not have uh, seen them at cinema, but I did. So we'll get straight into the countdown. At number 20, we have the second film from director Shane Carruth after, Sh after 2004's Primer. And it is Upstream Colour. Now it's a very, very strange film this. I'm not even sure what to class it as, whether it will be kind of a sci-fi film, kind of horror film, drama, comedy. I'm not quite one that not comedy because there's no comedy in it but it's basically it I don't even really know how to explain the plot but it involves parasites worms pigs sounds sights smells it's just a really really strange hybrid film but I really really enjoyed it. it's one of those films that it's impossible to understand on your first viewing so it's a film that literally demands repeat viewings and uh, just really really enjoyed it so in at number 20 we have upstream color and then at number 19 we have uh, The Moth Diaries. Um, this is a film that I'm pretty sure if you have heard of it, even if you've seen it, you probably would have seen it on DVD or something. I, again, I personally saw it in the cinema. Uh, it's not a good film by any stretch of the imagination, but there were enough uh, enough things in the film to kind of hook me in, which is really which is what I want from a film, really. And it stars Sarah Bolger, God, I love that woman, uh, Sarah Godot, or Gadot, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name, and uh, Lily Cole. And uh, basically, uh, Sarah Bolger and Sarah Godot basically are best friends uh, who stay at a kind of an all girls boarding school. And uh, the girl played by um, Lily Cole kind of comes into their lives and she kind of strikes a friendship with um, Sarah Godot's character. And uh, Sarah Bolger's kind of um, character is kind of very wary of her. And in the end, she finds out, well, not, it's not a, a spoiler or anything, but she finds out that um, Lily Cole's character is a vampire. Uh, it's directed by Mary Harron, who directed um, American Psycho. Uh, well directed and everything, uh, but the kind of the standout uh, part of the film for me is kind of the relationship between Sarah Bolger's character and Sarah Godot's character. Uh, I mean, it's impossible to go through the film without noticing the the kind of to, what, a better word um, lesbian aspects of the film. I mean, they are not gay; these characters aren't gay like at all. But there's this little, just this thing in the back of your mind that. It is. It's something. It's something that's kind of underneath, the, kind of the surface, if you know what I mean. But I say, well directed and everything. It's one of those films that it kind of um, uh, caters to kind of the tween audience, like the Twilight kind of thing. With uh, the mirror is kind of blood and gore in it, but it's not kind of excessive. It's kind of very watered down. But uh, like I say, it's not a good film by any means. But it's just a film that. I kind of liked, well, I don't even know if I really liked, but I kind of did. So, yeah, in at number 19, we have The Moth Diaries. We're at number 18, we have the dramatisation of the making of one of the greatest family films of all time. We have Saving Mr. Banks. Uh, now, it stars Tom Hanks as uh, Walt Disney and Emma Thompson giving an Oscar-worthy performance as a P.L. Travers the author of, uh, Mary, of the Mary Poppins books and basically it uh, follows uh, Walt Disney trying to get the right to make the, the film of Mary Poppins and it's just a really really well acted. I mean Tom Hanks never gives a bad performance and this is no different. I say Emma Thompson gives an uh, uh, Oscar worthy performance. Uh, it sometimes kind of uh, flashes back to her childhood and it has uh, Colin Farrell playing her father, uh, Ruth Wilson playing her mother and we've also got people like Paul Giamatti, um, Bradley Whitford, uh, B.J. Novak, and uh, Jason Schwartzman. So pretty good, pretty good cast. And uh, it's just a really, I class it as kind of a family film about the making of a family film, 
which it's just really really good like I say great performances really like the, the cinematography and everything but like I say it was I mean it could have been a bit higher but I just think that more that other films kind of I liked a bit more so and at number 18 we have Saving Mr Banks now in at number 17 we have a film that you'll probably be surprised that isn't higher up on my list uh, it's a film that I really enjoyed in the cinema but I just think that it won't I mean, it's not a bad film, but I just don't think that watching it at home will ever kind of equate to seeing it at the cinema. And it is Alfonso Cuaron's Gravity. Uh, the main thing I didn't really, well, not that I didn't like, but the fact that the uh, the plot is kind of routine. It's like something bad happens, they have to fix it. Something else bad happens, they have to fix it. It's just kind of a bit repetitive for me. Uh, great acting, though, Sandra Bullock, uh, George Clooney. Uh, really good acting, amazing special effects, amazing, I don't know if you'd class it as cinematography or if it's just kind of special effects, but I'm not quite sure. Really well directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Um, it's obviously been tipped to win kind of numerous, win numerous Oscars. And I just thought that the plot wasn't the greatest, which is why it's kind of quite low down on this list. But me, I say it's my list, so whatever. So in a number 17, we have Gravity. In number 16, we have a documentary film that I'm pretty sure you won't have seen this year. And the only reason I saw it in the cinema was because of a few cinemas, kind of different cinemas around the country were um, kind of doing kind of one-off screenings of this, which I went to. And it is the Dave Grohl-directed documentary Sound City. Now, it's a bit of a um, hybrid film. This kind of the first half is basically a straight-up documentary about this legendary recording studio, and I think it's California. Uh, so many amazing albums have been made there, like uh, Nirvana, Nevermind, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumours, and just great kind of classic, classic albums. And so, let's say the first half is kind of a straight up documentary, and the second half is basically follow uh, Dave Grohl buys the original kind of recording, kind of recording, uh, calling desk kind of thing called the Neve console, and he basically buys it and he gets like different musicians together, people like Stevie Nicks, Trent Reznor, Josh Holm. Um, Paul McCartney to um, record a new album, kind of using this uh, this this Neve console, and it's just even even me who's not not versed in any way to the kind of the technical side of music, I was enthralled by the whole thing. Uh, kind of more about the documentary about the um, kind of recording studio as kind of footage footage from the like hand like camcorder footage from the from the past kind of. Kind of showing what the studio was before it kind of became a studio, which I which I really really liked, and it's just even if you if you if you if you're a fan of music, even if you're not, I'd say definitely check it out. It's well worth your time. So in at number sixteen was Sound City. So in at number fifteen is the kind of token Pixar film of the year, and it is a sequel to to 2003's Monsters Inc. It is Monsters University. Now I had a really really fun time with this film. Some really, really funny bits in it. I like the kind of... I mean, Pixar films always have had kind of jokes for kids and jokes for adults, and I really appreciate the kind of... Well, jokes for both, but jokes for adults more. Um, it's just, I just thought it was really, really funny. I'm not going to go into the plots here. We're basically uh, uh, Mike and Sully who meet up in college, and they're kind of rivals and kind of other things and everything. And, but I just, I just really liked it. Obviously, the animation was great. I thought it looked pretty good in 3D. Uh, I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it was pretty, it was pretty good. But uh, like I say, I had an absolute blast with this film from start to finish. One of the funniest films of the year. So in number 15 was Monsters University. In number 14 is my personal favourite horror film of the year. Um, I realise that not a lot of people like this film, but I really did. And it is uh, Your Next. And it basically follows, uh, there's a, a family who meet up in kind of a cottage in the woods for kind of a um, kind of a family reunion, and uh, they end up getting killed by kind of picked off one by one by these guys wearing animal masks, and it really harks back to kind of the slasher films of old. Uh, the only thing I didn't really like about the film was the fact that the, I mean, when the Strangers came out years ago, I th I thought it was kind of really really creepy because it's just basically these three people like did it for kind of no reason. But I think the twist in this film wasn't kind of kind of revelatory enough, I didn't think. I just thought that it would have worked better if it was just kind of like like guys doing it for no reason. But 
apart from that, really, really well shot. This is a fan fantastic shot where basically this uh, uh, Shani Vincent, who plays kind of the um, kind of the the, the badass kind of uh, woman, and basically she tries to catch this killer by uh, basically in the in the dark, and she kind of sets up a camera, and like each time the camera flashes, you kind of see the guy kind of running towards her, which I really, which I really really like, really well. Um, Kind of really well shot and everything. And another thing, please, Ty West, please, please, please stick to being a director. You are not an actor by any means. Please don't. So number 14 is your next. Then number 13, we have a film that I thought would be kind of higher up in the list, but as usual, kind of films, other films kind of bumped it down a little bit. And it is the latest film from director Alexander Payne, starring Bruce Dern, June Squibb, Will Forte, and Bob Odenkirk. It is Nebraska. Uh, basically follows uh, Bruce Dern's character who believes he has won a million dollars in a magazine sweepstakes and he wants to travel to this um, town called Lincoln, Nebraska to kind of claim his money and people uh, kind of he owes money to different people and like as soon as everyone learns or thinks they learn that he's won all this money kind of old, old kind of feuds come to the surface and uh, it's just a really really funny there's oh man one of the funniest scenes of the year was there's this the scene where they're basically there's like this big family they're basically there's like a camera in front of them they're all kind of sat in front of the tv <laughs> and just just the dialogue which is really funny like how's your leg yeah it's all right it's just really honestly i was crying laughing numerous times in this film <laughs> i absolutely loved it uh best i mean saying this is not that kind of Good because he only made one film but it's his best film since sideways i absolutely loved it shot in black and white which i think lent itself to the lent itself to the film uh, film film a lot uh will forte uh is usually kind of the the straight-up comedy guy but sometimes the kind of the comedians make the best kind of comic actors because they get they have the timings and things and uh bob odenkirk um pops up as um uh bruce Dern's character uh, oh, woody uh, woody's other son and it's, it's really well shot. I love the fact that it's in black and white. Hilariously funny. Oscar worthy performance from Bruce Dern. And I just really, really loved it. So number 13 is Nebraska. Then number 12 is one of the funniest films of the year for me. Uh, it stars basically a who's who of American um, kind of comic actors. We have James Franco, Seth Rogen, Jay Baruchel, um, uh, Jonah Hill, Craig Robinson. Uh, Danny McBride, just ev basically, like I say, just a who's who of American comedy actors. We've got cameos from guys like Michael Cera, got Emma Watson, Jason Seal, Mine Star, Dave Crumholtz, Paul Rudd, just anyone you could, any anyone you can shake a stick at. And it is uh, this is the end. Uh, the basic plot is uh, Jay Baruchel. Everyone's playing themselves, which I thought was really, really, really clever. It's very kind of kind of meta comedy, which I really, really liked. And basically, Jay Baruchel comes to Los Angeles to basically hang out with Seth Rogen. And they end up going to James Franco's house for a party, and then the apocalypse starts happening, and it's just really, and it's bet them trying to kind of kind of survive in this post-apocalyptic world. It's just really, really funny, really kind of. Well, I don't say it's quite juvenile some of the time, but some of the time it is really, really funny. Like some of the funniest bits were like uh, Jonah and the gun was absolutely hilarious, and uh, the uh, they um, and the whole. Um, Pineapple Express 2 kind of <laughs> like really sh really shitty kind of kind of trailer for which I thought was really really funny and uh, yeah just I absolutely had a blast with this film I laughed from start to finish it's just really really funny like I say it loved like the, the kind of the smart comedy uh, I mean the fact that they're playing themselves an absolute genius move uh, the only thing I would say that if you're not a fan of any of the any of the people that are in it, I'd say stay away from it because there really is nothing in it for you. But I really liked it. So number twelve was this is the end.